ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the parking lot preview. To my right, my co-host Mike Maynard. I'm Matt Coach here to preview this game. Mike, happy Saturday. Happy Christmas in July. Happy Christmas. Well, Merry Christmas in oh. July. It's a great day to be at the Hyannis Harbor Hawks baseball field at McKean Ballpark. A lot of festivities going on. I hear Santa Claus is coming. I hear Buddy the Elf is coming. A lot of Santa hats being passed around. It's going to be a great day. Oh, my goodness. I heard Buddy the Elf is going to be, like, the big the big show. People are going to love Buddy the Elf. Not sure why. You'll have to come to find out. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, great game today. Harvard Mariners taking them on. Should be fun. Mike, Christmas and July, a perfect way for the Hawks to celebrate their six all-star selections. We want to give a quick shout-out to Aaron Savory, Sean Fitzpatrick, Casey Hintz, Michael Atalo, Eric Snow, and Kane Kepley. They were all selected to the 2024 Cape Cod Baseball League All-Star Game presented by Milton Cat. Congratulations to those six, Mike. All very deserving members of this All-Star team. All very deserving. There's a lot of noise that's going on right now, so yeah. I'm a little flustered. But, yes, as you mentioned, three pitchers, three position players, all of them very deserving. Most of these guys have been here since the very beginning, if not mm -hmm. all of them. I believe all of them have been here since day one. So a, a bunch of guys that really have showed that they can – continue their success from the beginning of the summer all the way until just over the halfway point until now. Uh, like you mentioned, every guy deserving of their spot. Aaron Savory is going to get the start yep. in the All-Star game as well. Big news for him. No other starters for the Harbor Hawks, but they'll all get their time. Everybody's mm -hmm. deserving of their spot. They'll all get in there. But Aaron Savory, again, huge. Again, last night, we'll get into that. But he's been probably the best maybe player on this Harbor Hawks team so far that's still here with us. Who knows? But very deserving. Great for him, starting pitcher of this year's All-Star Game. Yep, congratulations, Aaron. Mike, not a flaming hot take. He's been phenomenal, and we'll talk more about his phenomenal outing last night. Let's go back to the matchup tonight, guys. It's the Highness Harbor Hawks with a 16-11-1 record going against the Harwich Mariners, a 10-18 record. Hyannis looking to continue its dominance at McKean Park tonight. Of those 16 wins, I believe 12 of them are at home. We're trying to make it 13-2 record at McKean Park tonight. Kind of a mind-boggling stat, Mike, but we're just going to keep going, keep hoping for that dominance at home. In the season, Mike, we've been doing pretty good against Harwich. Tell us about that. 3-0 and oh against the Harwich Mariners, including on the road. Mm -hmm. Twice. Huge. That doesn't happen a lot for this Harbor Hawks team. Only four wins on the road. That's half our road wins. You mentioned it. 12 wins at home, only four on the road, two of them against these Harwich Mariners. So, obviously, so far to start the season, the Harbor Hawks have had the Mariners' number. Mm -hmm. Really have had a lot of success. A plus eight different run differential against the Mariners in those three games. So, it's been a little bit close mm -hmm. here and there. But coming away with wins is all that really matters. Yep. And, again, they've shown they can win on the road, shown they can win at home. That's a good sight to see. Most wins on Cape Cod at home, though. Start the season for the Harbor Hawks, 12, as you mentioned. Another home game tonight, mm -hmm. hopefully another win. Yeah, you mentioned it. If you look at that 3-0 and and just that, you're like, oh, easy game tonight. We've dominated these folks. But plus eight, I believe we've had a one-run game and a three-run game and then a four-run victory, something like that. The math is somewhere right around there. We definitely had one 8-7 victory over the Mariners. But plenty of close games, but coming out with the wins, all that matters for these Harbor Hawks. But, Mike, we feel good heading into this game because of the momentum we got in a big victory here last night. Can you tell me about that? That was a huge win last night. I believe after the game, I interviewed Mitch Carricker, and I say believe because I don't want to misquote him, but he did say it was maybe the most complete win wow. that, the, that he's seen, at least in a long time, since the very beginning of the season. Very good on both sides of the ball. 6-0 to zero against the Chatham Anglers. A shutout, big in part to Aaron Savory, only five scoreless innings last night. Had a little bit of a shaky first inning. Mm -hmm. Walked a few guys, a couple runners on, but then really settled in and just was dealing. Only let up, I think, one hit, two hits. He had one. He only allowed one hit. One yep. hit, four walks. Again, first inning was a little shaky, but really settled in. Had a great outing for himself. Sean Fitzpatrick, another all-star. Three innings last night, scoreless. Five strikeouts for him, I believe. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then Josh Hawk comes in for the ninth inning, strikes out the side. Really just pitching, dominated last night. On the hitting side, Anthony Silva, mm -hmm. in his second-to-last game with the Harbor Hawks, had a big game, a two-run homer, an RBI single. Oh. Someone's honking their horn over to our right. But another big game for Anthony Silva, who's really picked things up as of late. Uh -huh. And really, overall, the Harbor Hawks were just getting guys on base a lot, a lot of walks, a lot of hits. I believe it was nine hits, five walks last night. So getting runners on base at a high level. And uh, Aaron Savory, after, after the game, interviewed him. He was mentioning how that pressure being put on pitchers constantly, every inning, having runners on base, runners on base, it's tough to deal with. So 
obviously very good things all around for the Harbor Hawks last night. A very big win coming off of two rough losses mm -hmm. for the Harbor Hawks. So a good win coming back to Hyannis again tonight, hoping to continue that momentum with another win against the Harbor Commanders. That's for sure, Mike. And for our fans who watched yesterday's episode, we mentioned how the Chatham Anglers have a very potent offense. They had a player who had two home runs the night before coming here. So I think that adds another layer to how impressive the pitching performance was. Aaron Savory, Sean Fitzpatrick, Josh Ock. I tip my cap to the three of you guys. Absolute dominance outing, top to bottom, first through ninth inning there. Really great to see that. And then great to see six runs offensively, like our manager mentioned. Complete game, something you love to see. And Mike, personally, that gives me a lot of confidence heading into this affair. 100%. It was definitely, like I said, two rough games before that. So you're looking at the team saying, oh, boy, like what's going on? Things need to change. You got that change last night. Definitely things are heading back in the right direction. When we look at the other side, Mike, the Horwich Mariners, unfortunately for them, reeling off three straight losses, one of those a 4-3 loss to Falmouth. 4-3 loss to Falmouth last night. A Jake Ogden double in the fourth was the only RBI for Harwich. Tough night at the plate for them, mm -hmm. obviously, overall. Uh, even though they out-hit the Commodores, still couldn't come away with a victory. 7-4 to four in the hit column for those Mariners last night. Still not able to come away with a win. So, like you said, they're reeling three tough losses in a row. Coming into McKeon Ballpark, where the Harbor Hawks have really had a lot of success as of late. This is going to be a tough game for the Harwich Mariners to win, but we've, just, we've talked about it. It's been close games against these Mariners. It's been tough ones squeaking out. And uh, Harwich is definitely not a team that you can just squash over. They're mm -hmm. definitely, you know, not at the spot in the records that they would want to be necessarily, but still probably going to be a playoff team, still a team to worry about. And they definitely got some prolific hitters and pitchers littered throughout their organization. Yep, you mentioned it, Mike. When we look at that 7-4 to four hit ratio against the Commodores last night, that reminds me of something our good friend Jacob Irons likes to say. And that's when you talk about situational hitting. Unfortunately, you have seven hits and only convert that into three runs. You're lacking the situational hitting that you want and need in the Cape Cod Baseball League where you need to put up a lot of runs typically to win games. 6 nothing victory for the Hawks last night. This game between the Harwich Mariners and the Falmouth Commodores, a bit more low scoring than you typically see. So that's something to look forward to. If they get guys on base, hopefully our pitching staff, our pitching coaches can go out there. Hey, it's all right. Settle in. These guys may put pressure on you, but if you can just limit the hits after that, limit the runs that cross home, home plate, that's all that matters. And Especially after watching last night, Mike, I trust our pitching staff to stay calm and confident. No, I mentioned it earlier. Aaron Savory last night dealt with a lot of base runners in that first inning and was able to shut things down. So even with base runners, the Harbor Hawks pitching staff has really shown that they're able to work through the tough times and come away with no runs on the board, which is all you really care about. So definitely again tonight, even if Harwich putting on or putting base runners on, just calm down. It's all good. Mm -hmm. No, no runs on the board. Zeros up there is all we want to see. So should be interesting. But we'll get into that pitching matchup now. I mean, it's it's going to be a good one tonight. Yeah, let's talk about that, Mike. On the mound for Hyannis, another Cape Cod Baseball League veteran, something we've talked about so much on this show and something that gives us fans so much confidence when you see pitchers who have been here, done that, and succeeded. A guy who, heading into yesterday's matchup, was tied with Aaron Savory for most innings pitched on the Harbor Hawks. That's going to be Blaine Wink out of Ohio State, Mike, 16 and the third innings pitched on Cape. Talk to me about his success this summer. Yeah, so far, you mentioned it, has a lot of success and has a lot of experience on Cape 16 and a third innings pitched, just under a four ERA, mm -hmm. pretty solid on the Cape Cod Baseball League, 13 strikeouts, only six walks. So, so far, he's had a lot of success. He's been the mainstay in this pitching rotation. Obviously, Mitch Carricker is very confident in putting him out there. He's been pitching a lot as of late. And with a lot of these guys coming in and out, in and out, in and out, mm -hmm. some guys, you know, getting their pitch or their inning limits, whatever, Blaine Wink's been here the whole time. He's been solid, has not really had any bad games. You, you might see a little dips here and there, but overall he's been very consistent, very solid. We look for him to have another big game again tonight against the Sarge Mariners lineup, which again we mentioned struggled as of late, so hopefully he can continue his success here again tonight. Certainly, and when you look back at his performances at Ohio State this past season, over 40 innings pitch, 38 strikeouts, and only 9 walks. So back at school, nothing prolific. He's not going to strike out every single person to the plate. But what he is going to do is attack the zone and limit walks. Exactly the pitching philosophy that this Hyannis Harbor Hawks team has this summer on Cape. Already six walks with 13K ratio, so like a tiny bit higher, a smidge higher than he was at school. So look for him to be 
more consistent attacking the zone tonight, and I think he's going to keep those walks down. Like you mentioned it, he's been nothing but consistent this year. And I look to see nothing more than the same today, Mike. 100%. Another good game for the pitching staff last night. Hopefully he can learn from that. I know I talked to Aaron Savory again. I keep going back to my interviews last night, but I got a lot of good stuff. Aaron Savory last night was mentioning he was pitching low in the zone a lot, keeping balls low, keeping the ball, especially against that Chatham lineup, which was, you know, hitting home runs like crazy the games before. Keeping the ball low, keeping the ball on the ground, trust your defense. Yes. Let guys make plays. The Harbor Hawks have been super solid in the field defensively, making routine plays, making not routine plays look routine. Mm -hmm. Overall, it's been a very solid season for the team defensively. So these pitchers can really trust those guys. Let them let them put the ball in play. Really just weak contact is all you can look for, and Blaine Wynn's been good at that so far. For sure, especially in a wood bat league here, keeping that ball low in the zone. We can get you a couple double plays here. I believe the Harbor Hawks are leading the league in double plays defensively. It's that you love to see. On the other side, on the bump for the Horwich Mariners, Justin Matrovic, 6 3 pitcher out of Elon, right handed pitcher, excuse me. Mike, talk to me a little bit about Justin. So far, six appearances on Cape. Mm -hmm. Only has no starts, though. Mm -hmm. I was about to say one, but tonight is going to be his yep. first start. So, doesn't have that starting experience. You've mentioned it before. It's a little bit different. Different preparation coming into your start versus the bullpen outing. But so far, eight and two thirds innings pitched, 5.19 ERA, 10 strikeouts over those eight and two thirds. So, pretty high strikeout numbers and five walks. So, this Harbor Hawks lineup likes to walk a good amount. Five walks through eight and, eight and two thirds. It's pretty high. Mm -hmm. um, so, we'll look for Kane Kepley to get on a few times, probably due to a walk. This whole lineup, though, overall, has been super disciplined at the plate. And then at school, 80 innings pitch. So he has a lot of experience there. Just over a 5 ERA, 96 strikeouts and 30 walks. So he's been very solid so far over the course of the summer and spring. Again, no starts, though. We'll mm -hmm. see if that plays into any type of nerves or anything tonight. I don't want to call the guy out, but it's tough. It's, it's a tough league, obviously. You get a lot of scouts watching you. Of course. Never played at McKean Park. It's Christmas in July. Who knows? It's going to be an interesting night. Fans are going to be happy, and uh, it's going to be loud, hopefully. Hopefully, yes. I like when it's loud. But, yeah, Justin Mitrovich, good pitcher, has a lot of solid stats. He's been consistent and really has put up pretty solid numbers. Not going to wow you in any area, but really has been solid and consistent in every facet of the game. Mike, I'm glad that you mentioned it. 80 innings pitched at school. Pretty phenomenal to see he had such a long season at school, and he's still pitching here over the summer. Pretty awesome. And when you look back at school, those 80 innings came from 14 appearances and 14 starts. So yeah, he doesn't. while he doesn't have that starting experience over here on Cape, we know he has a routine. He's done it over at school. So now we just have to see how it translates here to the Cape. But I still, when I was looking at those numbers today, Mike, I was wowed. I was like, wow, 80 innings at school, and his school's letting him come down here and keep pitching? That guy has a rubber arm, and he loved to see that. 100%. Soon? Okay. Okay. Shout out Jim and Karen Hurley for a little interruption. <laughs> we're going to be moving on to Christmas in July pretty soon here, so we need to make sure we're all on the same page here. But overall, you mentioned it. Should be a really interesting pitching matchup tonight. Two consistent pitchers, two good pitchers, both around the same ERA, same strikeout, mm -hmm. same walks. Should be really fun to see how this plays out. For sure, Mike. And with that being said, guys, let's get to a fan favorite segment. That's going to be the player of the game picks. Mike, you want this one or you want me to go first? I can start us off. I'm going to go with a left-handed bat against the right-handed pitcher, Dalton Bargo. Had a lot of success so far to start his Cape League summer. Mm -hmm. Playing all over the place, too. Utility guy. Can play catcher. Can play third. Can play outfield. Can play first bit anywhere you need mm -hmm. this guy to block, plug in. He'll be there. He'll play at a good level. And he's had a lot of success at the plate. A couple bombs as of late, yep. too. A walk-off, a couple homers. This guy's really showing that he's a prolific hitter at the plate. Just won a national championship at yep. school. Obviously, that plays a factor in leading these team, leading this team through some big moments. I like Dalton Barger to have a big night tonight against the Harwich Mariners. Continue the success that he's been having at the plate. I like that pick, Mike. I'm going to go back to a name that you heard towards the beginning of the episode. That's because he's a Cape Cod Baseball League All-Star. And goes Eric Snow. He heard the news today. I'm sure he was excited. I'm sure he was happy. An honor he deserves in his second summer on Cape. Been so consistent for us all year, even in the ups and downs of playing time. Hasn't been an everyday guy he's in the lineup tonight, playing in the middle infield where he's done so well. I expect a few hits out of Snow, a few timely hits as well. Get himself a few RBIs, fill up that stat column. Eric, make me look like a genius. Eric Snow, player of the game. 
100%. Two guys that have been super solid as of late. Eric Snow has just been getting on base at an unbelievably high level. I believe leading the team in batting average. You mentioned an all-star now. He's been super solid. Played last year, too. Mm -hmm. He's a Harbor Hawk. That guy is, lives, eats, sleeps, breathes Harbor Hawks baseball. Love it. That's for sure. And now, Mike, the last segment of the day. The one, the only, the score prediction. I'm going to let you think it through a little bit. Not okay. sure you have yours ready, but I'll go ahead. Look at it. Reno, plus eight run differential against these Mariners. It's been tight contests, and it will continue to be tight contests against this team. We're going to win six to three. Not the biggest victory you've ever seen. Not the smallest. It's going to be a comfortable game, but it's going to keep us on the edge of our seats for nine full innings. Look for a six three Harbor Hawk victory today. Love it. I'm going to go a little high scoring tonight. I'm banking on these guys hitting some long balls. Christmas in July, everybody's going to have the morale up. Everybody's happy. Everybody's excited. Get up to the plate, hit some bombs. I don't know. I'm going to go 9-8, to eight, Harbor Hawks. I think, Ooh. like you said, close game tonight. I think it's going to come down to the wire. I think the Harbor Hawks are going to hold on, score nine runs, give up a good amount. Not sure who. Hopefully it doesn't end, you know, with an eight-run uh, suffrage at, at the pitching staff. But 9-8 to eight I'm going to go with. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I think it'll be a fun, interesting game coming down to the wire, and the Harbor Hawks will come out on top. I love that, Mike. I could so see that happening. And you just spark an idea in my brain. Back to back days, I'm going with an official declaration. This one's going to be way more short, short term for Christmas in July. You know, Christmas typically in the winter. Right. Eric Snow is going to make it snow. Wow. He's going to hit a ball over the wall today. Eric Snow, Homer, book it, official prediction. It's going to help him win player of the game, Mike. I love that. I love, you know, we didn't mention it. Anthony Silva tonight playing in his last game. Oh, yeah. I think I did mention it maybe. Last night was his second to last game. I did mention that. Tonight, his last game, either one of us picked him, but he deserves some respect. Yeah. Been here since the beginning. Played really solid over the course of the last two weeks. Has been unbelievable mm -hmm. at the plate. And, and in the field, he's been maybe the best fielder out there uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. But really has picked things up at the plate. Had a lot of success. And uh, he's definitely going to be missed in this Harbor Hawks organization. He's a guy that's been here since day one and uh, deserves to be recognized in this parking lot preview. So thank you, Anthony, for all of what you've done for the Harbor Hawks, and hopefully the team comes away with a win in your last game tonight. Couldn't have said it better, Mike. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Mike, thanks for joining us. Catch us here at McKean Park tonight, and if you can't make it, catch us right on your screen on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network over on Cape League TV over on Huddle. Thanks so much. Go, Go Hawks! Hawks.